Remember there was a list of three about submission to the king, about loyalty, about serving wisely, and okay, there's three. Now there are three here he talks about as well. You cannot control. Because remember, we don't know the future. We don't know to look ahead. But God himself, he knows that. So there's three things he talks about. One is... Now, there are two possible interpretations. One, possible physical wind. Same as recently, you know, the tornado that hit in the Midwest, okay? That is one possible interpretation. No person knew they couldn't predict, yeah, the tornado went through that area, right? Okay, so um, is this a sign like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, thank you. So we have a tornado. Uh, I have experienced only the east hurricanes uh, from New York. Not yet had this kind of activity. Okay. Now, with a second possible interpretation, you have what is called the spirit of a man. Because if you remember in John chapter 3 and verse 8, Jesus Christ he sits with the man whose name was Nick Odenus told him, you cannot predict where the wind goes. The same as the spirit that shows up, disappears, you can't predict that. Okay? So possible one is a physical tornado. The second possibility is really the spirit of man. You can't control both. It doesn't matter which you talk about. You can't control also, secondly, the day that you die. Now some people think, I'm going to go ahead and commit suicide. I control the death day. I'll tell you, inform you, that is wrong. <coughs> people go ahead, in, in New York, uh, my, my college, they had two bridges. One was on the east side of the college, and one was on the west side of the college. And the bridge was 200 feet down to the rocks and it was very cold water that was frozen, okay? Now, sometimes people would jump, and especially the Asian students from Japan, they were embarrassed because they arrived and they had a C in their math class, and they had a D in their science uh, class, and so they were embarrassed. They didn't want to go back to Japan and tell their parents they didn't have A's all for their classes. And so they would jump off the bridge near Christmas time. And then we would hear about how the fire department would go down there with a line and they would pull out the body and sometimes they would live and they would be in a wheelchair with a body. 200 feet on the rocks and they can't run, they can't swim, they can't do normal things because they tried to end the day with that. So God inside. And sometimes God says, no, son, I'm not going to let you die today. Thirdly, you cannot control being excused from duty. Excused from duty. You know, when a soldier joins and he sees now we're near to the war, sometimes people become afraid. I don't want to go to that war. I thought when I joined the soldier, I'm only going to work in the hospital. I'm only going to work in the kitchen. I'm only going to work in the... No. They give a gun to the person, they give a sword to the person, tell them you go out there in the front of the people and you die with all the soldiers. You can't be excused from duty. You do. Sorry. Now, the last example as we close today is the bad example of a king whose name is Ahab. Today I've given you three good examples related with Daniel, related with Esther, related with the other story before that about Nehemiah. Okay, these three examples were good examples showing the wise servant. Now, I want to give you an example of an angry king because chapter 8, verse 8 tells, no man has power over the spirit to control that. Not either has he power on the death day. Not either has he discharge from the war. Not either will wickedness deliver who the wicked king Ahab, he lusted for one thing. There was a farmer over there who had this beautiful farm place with big 
Great. Uh, yeah. And then the last thing, the last thing, why, why? He tried to buy it, and the farmer rejected him, told him no, because it's not proper in Israel to sell your own inheritance. The king went home to his bedroom and he cried and he cried and he cried. His wife, whose name was Jezebel, showed up and asked him, you are the king. Why are you crying? You have the right, the power to do whatever you want. You are the king. You are the man. And the man came to the I'm not happy because I don't have a great farm over there. He won't sell it to me. And the queen went ahead and told him, I will fix it for you. Don't worry. Just go ahead and sleep. Enjoy the rest. And used an evil plan to kill the farmer and to take out the great farm. The prophet who showed up in the house of the king and he rebuked the king and told him, As you have blood on your hands, as you would like to kill the king, why not? The blood will never escape the We understand that the king himself was a bad person. He lost him. He went ahead and allowed sin to spread through the kingdom. But in the end, he died because of what he did. That's right. There were two kings that went together for that. And King Ahab decided to replace the clothes with the other enemy king. Okay? And a man with a bow and arrow, he was shot far away. He didn't know where he was shooting. It just happened. And the king died. Because God, he led it. You can't control with your own power the wind. And you can't control the excuse. All the people continued the battle because they didn't know the king was there to replace. They thought that he continued to live. He was fine because they saw the clothes of the king. They saw the crown of the king. They saw him going around. It was the wrong person because the real king had died there. And it tells that the dogs ate. That's right. Jeremiah exposed the false prophet and told him that because the king believed the wrong group of prophets, he will die. So we need to pay attention to the wise counsel, not pay attention to the wise <coughs> Now, we're going to close. We arrived at halfway through chapter 8. Later on, we'll extend some more. But right now, it's, it's time to go into fellowship, and to eat, and enjoy your time together. The writer tells, eat and drink and enjoy your life. Because what? You can't control things. So we're going to go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to here gather together to listen to this word and also help us as we explain with the children and also explain with the people who are here about your word and the importance of that. There are very, very important principles here that have been taught this morning and hard to understand sometimes. Help us to understand it's not about only eating and drinking and enjoying because that is without God. But we're talking about now having a proper view and attitude before God and also before me to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.